This is Unit 4, Lesson 1, and the name of this lesson is The Angel of the Lord and Messenger Angel. Scripture for Meditation. The Mana requires of the Angel of the Lord, what is your name? So that we may honor you when your words come true. He replied, Why did you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Judges 13, 17, and 18. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. It will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, laying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and earth peace to men in whom his favor rests. Luke 2, 8 and 14. A beginning prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for creating your heavenly host to serve you in bringing your words of hope and truth to the shepherd at Christ's birth. Help me to see and acknowledge the work of your holy angels as you assign them to protect me and keep me under your watchful care. Amen. The lesson, the angel of the Lord. Although generally speaking, the angels are created beings, one angel, one angel of the Lord, angel of Jehovah, appeared not to be, the scholar C. Fred Dickinson says, that this title identifies with Jehovah. Distinction of Jehovah, identity with Christ, and ministers all argue in favor of his being and prime created Son of God. Ex Experts from Dickinson's book, Angels, Elect, and Evil, and it was published in 1975. Uh, this goes through several books um, that you can purchase and scriptures. So, the title in him, Elohim, Elohim, the Mighty One, was used of both true God and the gods of the heathen. But the title Jehovah Hebrew, Yahweh, was reserved for God of Israel. The eternally safe existence, one who made heaven and earth and who in, entreated into covenant relationship with his people. The angels in general are called the sons of God. Elohim, but never the son of Jehovah. Therefore, since the one angel has a singular and peculiar title, the angel of Jehovah, Malik Yahweh, he may, and excuse me if I said that wrong, he may suspect that he was more than an angel, perhaps Jehovah himself. 81, page 81 through 82. This angel found Hagar, Genesis 16, verse 7, and promised to do himself what God alone can, in verse 10. Moses, the writer, identifies the angel as Jehovah that spake un unto her, verses 13. When the angel appeared to Moses in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, Exodus 3, 
verse 2. Verse 4 says, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. King James Version. The one who spoke with Moses is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And with this announcement, Moses hid his face for fear of looking upon God. In verse 6. Upon this historic occasion, God revealed his name as I am, that I am. Verse 14. The eternal, unchanging one. Would God entrust this unique personal revelation to a mere angelic creature? Acts 7, verse 30 through 34 seems to identify the angel as the Lord Yahweh, Exodus 3, 2 through 7, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The record of Gideon commissions ident identifies that one who spoke to him as the angel of Jehovah, Judges 6, verse 12. And as of Jehovah, verse 14, without any notice of change of speaker, Mona and his wife saw the angel of Jehovah, and upon recognizing him, Mahona feared they would die because they had seen God. Judges 13, 21 and 22. That is the angel. The angel was Jehovah is also imp implied in verses of Zechariah when the angel in Zechariah 3, 1 seems clearly to be called Jehovah in the next verse, 2. He, interce he intercedes to Jehovah in Zechariah 1, 9 through 11. We see the man among the mortal trees was the angel of Jehovah. And the Jehovah that had sent the horsemen who were to report to his angel. The separate identity of Jehovah and the angel of Jehovah also appears in verses 12 and 13. Where the angel of Jehovah intercedes from Jerusalem as he speaks Jehovah. He calls upon Jehovah in the vision of the cleaning of Joshua and Zechariah saw the angel of Jehovah defending his priestly leader of Israel against the accusations of Satan in the presence of Jehovah. 3, 1 and 2, the angel verse 1. It's called Jehovah. And Jehovah said unto Satan, Jehovah, rebuke, you, rebuke thee, O Satan, ye Jehovah, that hath chosen thy, said unto Satan, wait a minute, has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee, I'm sorry, verses 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 2. An angel called Jehovah was speaking to the se se separate person called Jehovah. How can there be more than one person called Jehovah? There are four considerations that help to identify the angel of Jehovah as Christ in pre-created appearance, the second person of the Trinity, the Son is the visible God of the New Testament. John 1, 14 and 18. Colossians 2, 8 and, 8 through 8 and 9. Accordingly, the Son was the visible manifestation in the Old Testament also. 
2, the angel of Jehovah no longer appeared after Christ's incarnation. A reference such as Matthew 1.20 does not identify the angel in, and should be understood as an angel of the Lord. 3. They both were sent They were both sent by God and had similar ministries such as revealing, guiding, and judging. The Father was never sent. 4. The angel could not be the Father or the Spirit. They never take bodily form. John 1 18 and 3 8. The angel confirmed the covenant with Abraham. Genesis 22 11 through 18. God has previously promised Abraham great personal, national, and universal blessings. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Abraham had believed God. 15, 5 through 6. And God cut a covenant unconditionally with Abraham. 15, 8 through 21. So great was his faith that he would have sacrificed Isaac, his only son. But the angel of Jehovah stopped him and confirmed God's promises. 22, 15 through 18. It is, the, it is in this condition that the angel is identified with Jehovah as he who, as he who had, let me back up, I'm sorry guys. It is in this condition that the angel is identified with Jehovah as he who made an unbreakable covenant with Israel. Judges 2, 1. Christ was sent to confirm the promises to Israel for their deliverance and the forgiveness of the sins for all. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 28, I'm sorry. Romans 15, 8 and 9. Hebrews 9, 15. At times, the angel brought judgment when Satan had provoked David to number Israel to reveal in his military might. He was displeased and sent the angel of Jehovah to properly destroy Jerusalem. 1 Corinthians 21, 1 and 14 and 15. David saw him with a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem and fell on his face and repented and instructed an instruction. In 16 and 17. Then the angel commanded him to build an altar, which later became the site of Salamic Temple. 21, 18, 24 through 29, chapter 22, 1. Six. During the great tribulation, the Lord Jesus shall judge his people Israel, along with unbelieving earth dwellers. The Lord, let's say, unbelieving earth dwellers. Matthew 24, 44 through 51, 25. Chapter 25, 
32 through 42. Second Thessalonians 1, 5 through 10. Revelations 5, 5 and 6, chapter 6, verse 1 through 17. The purging done, the temple will be rebuilt for worship. Ezekiel 20, 37 through 42. Chapter 43, 2 through 5, and 12. An angel of Jehovah has been shown to be equal in the essentials of Jehovah and yet distinct, distinct form Jehovah. The only answer to these seemingly con con contradictions is that he is a pre-created appearance of our Lord Jesus and the eternal Son. Indeed, he is the most frequent Christophany in the Old Testament. His ministries are varied and extensive and well known in the Old Testament times, from the day of Abraham to Zechariah. Some of his ministries are those that only God himself can do and are so extensively heralded with Christ's ministry that they argue further and is identity as the prime for nation for a nation Christ however you say that I'm sorry guys <laughs> messenger angels the Greek word of angels literally means messenger throughout the Bible angels served in this role bringing vital information to God's prophets priests and people. The chief of minister angels is Gabriel. Okay, pens and papers if you ain't already got them out. Okay, is read Luke 1 and 2, then discuss and answer the following question. Question, what are the events about which Gabriel brought good news? What were the messages delivered to each of these people, Zechariah and Mary? When did, when not serving a messenger, where is Gabriel? Where does he stand? What other angelic visitation is recorded in Luke 1 and 2. When confronted by a heavenly host, whether it was once or a group, the common reaction was a combination of fear, amazement, and even reverence. In Luke 1 and 2, Zechariah, Mary, and the shepherds all identically reacted this way. Of the following words, write these words down guys and then you circle the ones used in Luke 1 and 2. Describe the reactions to singing angels. And this was the references are from NIV. Okay. So, startled. Or you just write down the words you, that you feel apply to it. But go ahead and write them all down. That way, after you study, you'll know exactly which ones to circle. Startled. Grabbed with fear. Troubled wonder, 
happy, fear, rejoicing, terrified, curious. In each instance, what immediate reaction was offered to calm the fear of those being visited? A. Bow down and worship. B. Don't be silly. C. Don't be afraid. D. God has sent me for us. The bearer of good news. God's goals in sending his angels as messengers was not to instill fear, but to offer good news of hope and joy and promises. Although the Christmas messenger angels didn't say especially we are from God, they did not hasten to identify that what was he who was who sent them. Further their message messages and actions glorified God and specifically furthered his purpose. All of the information imparted has already been hurdled ages earlier through the written history history and prophecy that made up the Old Testament. Essentially, these angels brought no new revelation, but were bringing insight and understanding to existing revelation. They told specifics, a fulfillment, a prophecy. Only on very special occasions in the Bible did God send angels to speak to his servant. God typically speaks to believers through his word. Eliminated by the Holy Spirit. Illuminated, I'm sorry. Okay, this is true or false, guys. True or false. God frequently uses angels to bring new revelation to individuals. True or false. Any messages spoken by an angel of God will never contradict the written word of God. True or false? Seeking to be touched by an angel is seeking to be touched by an angel is an appropriate pursuit for angels. True or false? Sometimes Angels appear as people allowing themselves to be used by God to do His will and bring blessings to others. Enhancers of our ministry to others. Further off, what Further, although the news imparted by angels in the Bible impact the hearers and affected how they would live their lives and make their choices, the news was not just for that person, rather the news was directed to the hearers in their God, given roles and carrying out his preordained will as it would impact others around them. Although individuals were blessed and strengthened by angelic visitations, the implement purpose was to enhance the individual's ministry to others. True or false? God sends his angels only for individuals' personal benefit. True or false? Praying to angels is okay for Christians to do. True or false? 
the appropriate response to it, a visitation by an angel is to give lectures, write books, and focus on how special that specific event was. True or false? Angelic visits were to facilitate the sharing of God's word and ministry beyond those visited. Discuss these questions with a group or to think on them, meditate on them. One, what kinds of events in our lives might warrant an angelic messenger? Number two, what are ways one might recognize that an angel was sent from God? Number three, what abiding presence is more valuable experience than any hoped for angelic visitation? A review. The angel of the Lord, angel of Jehovah, was a distinctive minister, minister in the Old Testament and is most probably the Greek coordinated son of God. Angels of general have brought messages to God's servants. However, angelic visits were a means of learning about his will and his ways. We have been provided with the Bible, which is our foundational source of all good news and information from living out our Christian walk. Additionally, we have the person of the Holy Spirit of God who indwells us and illuminates to us the meaning and applications of his word. Finally, we have the special privilege of being under the direct shepherding oversight of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, okay guys, this is a mouthful study. So, can't wait to get off here and get in there. And I will see you for lesson two. Subscribe if you like it, and we'll see you again for lesson two.